What's up guys, welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage, once again at the Performance Electronics Dyno. And because you guys have been badgering me so much, we have the 07K Turbo 944 back. We have our fuel pump all sorted out and we're gonna send it. David, why don't you uh, channel your best Speed Academy impression here and tell us uh, what we're gonna make today. All right, PT. You know, we got the we got the 944 on the dyno. It's going to be great. Uh, we're going to see how much boost it can push and uh, make sure it's ready for TMP next week. And we're going to make some... Oh, we're going to make some serious JMPT. In all seriousness, uh, we are going to try to make a lot of jam. And we love you guys at Speed Academy, so we're just playing. But um, we switched the fuel pump out to the 044. One of you guys had commented either on Facebook or in the YouTube comment section that we should check the factory wiring harness because it could have been an issue with current at the stock fuel pump. And we did not do that, but we have been noticing some weird electrical gremlins with the taillights. So I think that there's a good chance that that was happening. So in order to make that a non-issue, we ran a 12 gauge wire from the relay at the ECU directly to the fuel pump. We won't have any more problems there. We're gonna have plenty of fuel tonight. We're gonna be able to turn the boost up to whatever we want. Well, I mean, as long as we keep it below 350 foot-pounds of torque so we don't blow the engine, or at least that's the safety net we've set for ourselves. In the interest of science, we are gonna do one other thing as well. This dyno has been calibrated to work with power sports vehicles. So it reads a little funny. Uh, the Mustang Dino guys told them it was gonna read low. Um, it's not an excuse. We're just saying like, this dyno reads low, we're using it for tuning. At the end of this video, we'll show you what the car does on a dyno jet. But to get a better understanding of how this dyno reads, we've got our buddy's Mustang here with an LS. It's a six liter LS with a cam, um, long tube headers, custom tune, etc., etc. We know what power he has made on other dynos in town. We're gonna slap it on here to do a comparison. So we'll have that here in a little bit after we do some dyno pulls on the 944. David bumped up the duty cycle on the boost control solenoid by 5%. We're not 100% sure how much boost that's gonna add yet, but we're gonna creep our way up to that 22 PSI. Let's see what this run does. So first and foremost, the most interesting part is these two lines are the runs from my NA 07K swap build. Uh, that's a big difference. It's amazing what a turbo can do. Now, when we talk about the difference and what kind of power this thing makes on different dynos, granted we did a little more fine tuning with the uh, NA car, but we were at like 170 wheel horsepower uh, with the NA 07K here, 07K here. We ended up being like 195-ish uh, on a dyno that doesn't uh, break as many hearts. But if we look at the run we just did, what you'll notice here at 6,500, we start dipping off a little bit in torque and we weren't seeing that in some of our earlier runs. There are a couple potential things that we're looking at before we make the next run. We think that A, there's a good chance that uh, as we made it to 22 pounds of boost, we started blowing out spark at the top end. Uh, Alan is over there regapping the plugs. We're dropping them down to uh, 0.018. So what's that, 18 thou? Ooh, I got it right, 18 thou. We're dropping it to that. 
We started the day off at like 35 thou. The other thing, David said that the map on the top end was a hair rich. There's some fine tuning to be done there. So we made 407 on that run. We had dropped the boost down just a little bit. So we were just over 20 PSI on that. I wanna look at the torque curve. I wanna show you guys something. And I wanna tell you a little story about how life comes full circle. All right, so here's, here's what I wanna say about this graph. And let me, let me give you a little backstory. Uh, a few days ago, Speed Academy did a video where they replaced the G25 660 on their STI with a G30 660. They picked up a bunch of top end power and I was joking around with Alan like, oh, you know what? Like these were similar power numbers. You're gonna have to upgrade your turbo, your turbine wheel and housing and everything's not gonna be big enough. And I mean, I was just messing with him, you know? And uh, well, I think that we may have run into the exact same issue as they have. We changed the gap on the spark plugs. Everything's good. We're not breaking up at the top end. We've got the fueling right where it needs to be, but the torque curve is still dropping off. So if you look at the torque curve here, at lower boost levels and lower power levels, we were able to carry this just completely flat all the way out, as high as we wanted to rev it. Now, as we've gotten to, and this is actually just over 20 PSI, uh, so we got the tune dialed, we revved it out to where it needed to be at, you know, 20 PSI, we're making 407 wheel horsepower. But this torque curve is dipping. And the only thing that really makes any sense to me is that we may have a restriction on the hot side of the turbo. Unfortunately for us, we don't have a relationship with Garrett and we can't really justify spending another $2,200 uh, to see what happens on the top end. So that's all okay because the car is gonna be bananas where it's at. But we are gonna do two things now. Uh, one, at the very end of this video, we're gonna take the car to a dyno jet. We're gonna throw it on and get those numbers just to try to compare what this dyno does. But tonight, still, we're gonna throw my buddy Dan's 65 Mustang on the dyno. And if you guys have not seen the video, we did a full breakdown of Dan's Mustang and it's an incredible car. I'll throw that up here, but your car is a six liter LS. Six liter LY6 with a mass racing cam. So the LY6 is a... Six liter iron block. Iron block, mm -hmm. okay. Same heads as a LS3, basically LS3 intake and long tubes that I built. Otherwise, it's a stock truck motor. And, nine a, and a half custom one tune, you've had it tuned by? Uh, Nick Skates Precision okay. did all the tuning on it. So explain that cam to us. What What's that cam meant for? It's supposed to be, you know, good mid-range torque and it, the, it keeps the, uh, it's still retained the VVT, so it's got a, oh, okay. it's gotcha. got a real, a real good power band, I guess you'd call it. Okay. And, um, what have you made on other dynos? You've been on a couple different dynos around town, right? It made 390 at Weapon X, which is a dyno jet, and it made 370 at Nick Skates, which is, or no, sorry, Mustang Dyno, and Nick Skates is also a Mustang Dyno. And you made 390 and 370? It made 390 at Weapon X. I added a bunch of stuff to it. It feels faster, but then it read lower. I mean, you know. It's, it just goes to show you that all dynos are so different. We made 407 and, you know, we can call that the number. I think that running your car tonight will give us a good indication of how this dyno compares to other Mustang dynos. And then we can slap it on a dyno jet and see what that says. And all of this is just a lot of fun. Right. It's a really good experiment and it's a good excuse to see Dan's car again. That cam has just enough chop.
372 and 343. So maybe this dyno doesn't read that low after all. I guess it just is a Mustang dyno. Alan just handed the keys to Dan and took us all for a rip. Dan, what, what do you think with your uh, unbiased opinion as an LS and Porsche guy? Dude, that was crazy, right? <laughs> Dude, I, I I can't put it into words. I went down the road and I was shifting and it felt like my old turbo. You get in the boost, you let out, you shift, you get in the boost. Turn around, Alan says, no, shift it at 7,500. You were shifting at what, like 4,800? 4,900. I turn around and come back past them and it was like, you see the, the lines coming towards you like you're in a spaceship or something? <laughs> The, the power band is so broad, I it's guess. It's linear and it's it infinite. Just, it goes to where I would shift my car and then it feels like you just keep going for another minute or so. <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> and we, we couldn't get enough of it. We just kept driving up and down the road. All right, guys, it's a week later and we have made it to the dyno jet. We're gonna do a like for like run. So I want you guys to comment down below what you think the power figures are going to be on the dyno jet. Alan, David, and I have bets. Uh, I think David was 450, Alan was 440, and I was 451. Going full prices right. Comment down below what's the dyno jet number going to be. Here we have it guys. Looks like I am the winner of today's challenge. 454.5 is our max horsepower. That's at 6,700 RPM. And if we run the cursor over to look at torque, it looks like we're 385 torque. Now we are still getting that dip like we were talking about. It looks like at about 60, well, I guess right where peak power was is where we start dropping off and I'm still assuming that that's based off the turbine housing choking the engine. Uh, really fun video to put together. We got to do the Mustang Dyno versus the Dyno Jet. We got to see peak numbers for the Turbo 07K. Uh, there's still fine tuning to be done on you know throttle response and yada 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 all that stuff. Uh, we got to do a comparison with an LS so really just a lot of fun. Had a great time over the past couple weeks with buddies. So thanks to Dan and David and our friends here where I'm not allowed to say where we are. Lastly, right now, we are starting the Labor Day sale on our website. Everything on the website, 10% off. Hats, 07K swap kits, intakes, exhaust manifolds, t-shirts, doesn't matter. Anything and everything, 10% off. Go take advantage. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.